Well, what a beautiful day to have a little bit of devotion time and word time uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'm so glad that you would take the time to listen and, uh, and join in uh, as we look at a place where we could really allow our idle time to turn into word time instead of idle time like we talked about Sunday where we allow idolatry to get in the way of uh, what God really, really wants us to do, and that's to spend some time with Him, to have face time with the Lord, to have word time with the Lord. We need to really desire it. So on this beautiful, beautiful afternoon, the warmest day in 2020 out at the sports park, ADP Sports Park, where, of course, everyone that has ever been out here knows there's a little bit of breeze, a little bit of wind, but that's okay. It's great to kind of imagine that uh, we'd be in Happy Five Soccer Club preparation for second week, and we would be uh, headed toward our second Saturday, but that's all right. We'll get there. We'll be back to being out on the fields and being with the kids and with the families and, and really just ministering, and we'll be listening to Damon's Charge as we get into the Word and get into our time on the field and really teach uh, children uh, some things that are about uh, soccer and how much we love to teach them about soccer, but also about life and about the gospel and about the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what I'd like to do today, just for a few minutes with you. On Sunday's messages, we looked at the study in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and, and saw where David, of course, our man David, who as the king of Israel is reigning strong and reigning well and, and been in the midst of so many blessings. He has uh, had a sweet time with the Lord and, and receiving the, the Davidic covenant from God and, and understanding his position before the Lord in that and being humbled and overwhelmed. And as we looked even at the last few verses of 2 Samuel 7, more than one Sunday, uh, we are uh, just uh, struck by how David was in communion with the Lord and how he knew that idle time needed to be spent with God so that it was not idle time that became idolatry or idle time, but rather word time, worship time, face time with God. And that's really something that we're pointing to deeply in uh, Sunday's message out of chapter number 11. David was struck with this time in his life where for some reason he just decided to go down a pathway of sin. And, and for some reason in his life, how about some reason in my life, some reason in your life that we would do such a thing? We we don't really uh, set out and uh, plan out such things, uh, but sometimes with that idle time, sin comes up. And when sin is conceived after being enticed, it brings forth death. And for David, um, we can look at one of the references that we had in our, in our message, and it was uh, right off the bat in thinking that how do we fight idleness and stop it from becoming uh, idle time and idolatry, and that was the, the idea that we would flee temptation at all costs. And there was a, a reference of Psalm 19, and, and I don't know for, for our message, I don't believe we went there, but I want to go there for just a few minutes uh, today in our devotion time and say, okay, David, what did you write in Psalm 19? Well, it starts out with one of the most uh, evidentiary verses in Scripture about how God is messaged by himself everywhere. He declares himself when he says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, night unto day, I mean night unto night showeth knowledge. And so we know that this Psalm 19 is a strong one where David is having communion with the Lord early on in his walk with the Lord from our accounts way back in 1 Samuel. And so as he's written so many of these Psalms in different times of his life, we know in Psalm 19, he's writing also some things that we reference for our message and how you and I know that if we can just say, okay, temptation's coming in our idle time, I'm going to run. I'm going to flee from that sin, and I'm going to flee to the Lord, flee from the sin, the temptation of it, and join unto the Lord. And in Psalm 19, verse number 12, 13, and 14, it says this, Who can understand his errors? Speaking of myself, and he's writing it, of his errors, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Lord, I, I need to understand my own errors. Verse 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let not, excuse me, let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. He gets at the end of this psalm with those incredible strong words of how to fight idle time. Filling our time with word time, though, and filling our time with being in the presence of God gets us to the place where we can then pray and ask God to do that. David in this psalm says so many things about the word of God itself. And the word of God in its characteristics talks about how it's perfect and sure and upright. You know so many characteristics of the word of God. David's pointing to that in this psalm. In Psalm uh, 19 verses 7 through 11, we see that he uh, points out that the word of God is eternal and it's pure and it's clean and it's true. And I love how he says in verse number 10, More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. That's the words of God. The word of God is sweeter than honey and sweeter than the honeycomb. Honey, in a jar, honey, and any type of container poured out on your toast or whatever it may be is so sweet. But how about the honeycomb? That's the storage center of the honey that the bees have made, that hexagonal wax cellular type of setup, how God has designed his bees to hold on to that honey in the honeycomb. What would it be like for that word of God to drop down from the honeycomb and be so sweet to us? That's when we know that idle time no longer becomes something bad and turns into idle, I-D-O-L time, but rather it turns into a place of word time. And David is telling us we have to get into the word and desire it. I know you know that. I know we all know it, but we need to be reminded of the characteristics of the word of God and how it's so sweet. It tastes good. Boy, I tell you, it's a sweet taste in my soul. And for Cheryl and I, when we went out to see our little grandson being born and when we see our grandchildren, it's sweet, but it's nothing sweeter than getting even closer and nothing sweeter then, and then just, yeah, we saw the pictures. Yeah, we saw everything about our grandson. But to be able to just hold him, that's even more sweet. And that's the way God's word is. We can hear about God's word. We can hear about how sweet it is. And somebody can tell us, like, I'm talking about it right now. But how about if you nestle up into the word of God yourself and you say, Lord, I see that the word of God has blessings for me, as he says in verses 7 and 8 and 11. He says that it converts the soul. That's a blessing for you and I when we're in the Word. And it's also a place where it makes the simple wise, as it says in verse 7. Also, the Word of God, and David tells us that it rejoices the heart and it enlightens the eyes. That's verse number 8. In verse number 11, again, we see where the Word warns the servants and it rewards the obedient. There's blessings from the Word of God. There's characteristics from the Word of God. And of course, we know that if we would just make idle time, word time, and make it face time with the Lord, then it'll be sweeter than just tasting a little bit of honey, which tastes really good. Maybe hearing the word from someone else. But when you get the honeycomb for yourself, you grab the Bible yourself, the word yourself, and you fill your time with word time, then we know fleeing the temptation to sin is on the other side, a place where we join in the communion with the word. God's word is still his way, his truth, and his life in Jesus. I sure hope that you enjoy your word time today, this evening, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, whatever day, whatever time of the day it is, Allow God's word to become the replacement for your idle time. And we no longer have idle time. We have word time. Praise the Lord. We continue to strive and endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. I love you, First Bible Baptist Church family.